Hello and welcome to my recap of the 2023 Tianyuan title match. Tianyuan means center of heaven or something similar. In Go, it particularly means Tengen, the center point on the whole Go board. So you can think of this in an uh, analogy to the Japanese Tengen title and the Korean Chunwan. In fact, there used to be international tournaments between the title holders of the three. Those don't exist anymore, but the title matches and the title still absolutely does exist. This is the 37th Tianyuan title match. In the last few years, the title holder has been changing hands. The most recent winner is Miyu Ting, but it's very important to the professional players to win a title like this. The winner's prize is $60,000 or so. The runner-up is $30,000 or so. And importantly, whoever wins gets to go straight to the title match the next year. Meanwhile, the challenger is decided by a 32-player single elimination tournament, which is really hard when you're playing against 32 top Chinese professional players. So Dang Yifei won the tournament to challenge Muting this year. If he can win this match, he becomes the title holder, not only securing $60,000 this year, but a seat in the match next year is also extremely valuable. I don't know too much about Dang Yifei personally, but I do know a bit about Miu Ting, and he is crazy. He won the Tianyuan last year against Gu Zhihao 2 to 1. He is one of the most aggressive players and crazy players in modern Go. Okay, let's take a look at their game. Dang Yifei was black, Miu Ting was white. You can see Dang Yifei starts with a two space high enclosure in the upper right, and Miu Ting approaches. Dang Yifei pincers, Miu Ting leans. This is all stuff that we've seen before with AI. And in fact, even this one is something that we've seen before. This is a common Joseki nowadays, which <laughs> may seem very strange. You know, the random six line stone is common Joseki. Why there? Why there of all places? Well, it tends to have a pretty good connection to this white group. And it's hard to play a move with this group that wouldn't become slow. So for example, if you just jump here, then when black jumps up like this, the weight shape is like, isn't it so awkward? It's not going anywhere, right? And if instead weight would try to go this way, then it can be cut right away. So you might think to play like jump here, but then black can play the approach this way and weight again feels very awkward. It turns out if you play a move like this, then we're sort of getting on top of black's attempt to build already and defending our group with a stone that we're going to want like in almost every variation to just run like this all the time black challenges this move he plays the knight's move from the left side he's trying to show hey i can uh show that that three space is not as connected as it might be if i left it alone but muting knows the correct follow-up to this joseki which is to lean here <laughs> leaving the elephant's eye because, of course, white is the person on defense. Black doesn't have the time to strike at that right now. Black does have the time to defend his stone on the inside, which starts a bit of a complicated fight. White doesn't really dare to block here because then he'll get into a brawl where he doesn't have that much preparation and Black has already played a nice approaching move. So he chooses to attach here first. Now, if Black will respond to this, maybe then he'll be able to block and have enough power to seal this black group in. That's why black does not respond to it and challenges instead towards the white cutting points in the center. White fixes like this, exchanging for black's cornerstone and plays the Hane here. So the meaning is to press black down and then be able to connect and make it so that this stone is not posing a serious threat for white. In fact, that's what happens in the game. Black plays here and white connects like this. I was curious why black didn't exchange here, because if white just Atari's this way and then Atari is here, now black can play this Atari in Sente, still come back to this area. The exchange here, the shape looks worse for white because black already has a cut on the outside and even the cut inside is still accessible for black. So that's true, it would be worse for white if white just eats the stone when black honey is inside, but white has a nice move here, a nice way to break the black's intention, which is to exchange this move. If this one is Sente, if black answers, then white can Atari here and connect like this. 
Now the black stones on the outside are very heavy and white became quite thick as they made a nice splitting shape through the black shape. So that's why black just pulled back here instead of playing an aggressive variation and white pulled back as well, making sure to stay connected and black saved his group in the end. Now that he doesn't really have as much pressure in the center. White continues to press, so to try to ask black to make a life on the side, black obliges. And now white does the best response to the upper right enclosure that I know of. It's really annoying when this happens against you. So white plays this move, asking black how he wants to take care of his base on the side. Black's like, okay, let me try to take the maximum territory. And white plays here. The meaning of this, when white plays this invasion, we ask black to take an influence towards the right side. The way that Muting has placed his stones on the right side so far has made it very valueless. He's demanded that Black make his life. Black mostly has. And the white stones on the outside aren't even that heavy. They aren't even that many points, even if Black could attack them seriously. So basically everything on the right side is relatively strong or unapproachable. If Black gets an influence there, it's not really going to do anything. But it's hard for Black to do something else other than get an influence to the right side. You know, Black can't just like randomly totally play from the top side or something like that. I could live in the corner. So in the end, Black has to block here anyway. Black could block in the corner instead, like this directly. Then still, White can press down and approach. And still, Black has to be very passive, basically low in the upper right corner. So it's very hard. And this is something that we can learn as well. It's very hard to play with that uh, two space high enclosure when white makes the right side relatively overconcentrated or valueless in any way, and then plays that particular invasion where black has no real response other than to take influence. Okay, it's a really good idea from Yu Ting here. He, after seeing black take the influence, presses black down again on the side. Black just protects this way. If black had played here, then Black thought this move will be Sente for White to break the area later. So this one gives Black better chances to attack this White later. But White will obviously ignore for now and just go to the top side. So he attaches here. So Black is trying his best to attack this White group from the outside and to gain something of note on the top side. White just connects. Black connects here and White goes to the corner. Black plays this one. Wait descends. Black plays this one. This is Sente. So if White doesn't respond, this group is locally dead. White makes a couple exchanges outside first before living. So White could just block and make a living shape, but White chooses first to push and cut like this to make a couple more Ataris. Now if Black connects, White will live in the corner. So White managed to make this outside shape. It's not really that strong, but it's something for White and live in the corner and black got just like the right side on second line territory and some random group on the top side now it was really successful for right and it's hard to show anything that black could do that much better you could argue instead of this connecting move you can try to descend right away which poses more problems to the white life you know if white does this stuff then black can really try to capture this this group maybe it's uh in terms of sumego it looks like this. This is the proper capturing method where we play the small knight and if white tries to block, we pull back. And this gives us the most power to reduce this white eye space later. So to have it not have very much space, if white plays here, then you can see we just Hane now and white doesn't have any space remaining to make two eyes. This is the point. So that's how you capture this group. Five stones on the third line in the corner where you have the uh, descend, you can play the small knight. But even that one, it had a lot of liberty weaknesses outside. So the reason why Black played here was to fix those weaknesses, make sure that nothing terribly wrong could happen. And that variation, we had a chance to play cuts and ladder or capture on the side. Nothing was really working that well for Black, and yet somehow, Muting has taken a lead. You can see, you can feel Muting's AI preparation. He's one of the most prepared top professionals. He knows exactly how to take advantage of that upper right corner and put Black into like the strategically hard position, not just a tactically 
card position or a specific sequence that he learned, but he understands the AI strategy of how to make that upper rate enclosure not work as well as it can if uh, if it meets its full potential. Okay. Well, Wei has a small lead now, but still the game is very playable. <laughs> I promise it's not the most interesting part of the game. Black plays the approach on the top side. So it's a very large extension from his top side group. If Wei would just back off, Black is hoping to take some territory on the fourth line, so Wei invades and tries to attack both groups. The one stone in the upper left and the four stones in the upper right. Black plays Atari now. So he's asking Wei, hey, can you really dare to save that one stone that is cutting off my four stones? Or do I just have a route back whenever? Even if Wei would ignore this one, it's already gaining Black a lot of influence, some pressure to put on the white shape on the right side later. Yeah, Muting, as I said, he's an aggressive player. There's no chance he would not extend here. And actually, I think it's also the correct thing to do in this position as well. Because Black should play the capture now to show the merit of his cutting move, and Wake gets the chance to extend now. Of course, the four stones on the top side, they aren't dead. Black can run them out like this. But uh, Wake has gotten into a situation where it's a running fight between the Black top side group, the white three stones, the white stone over here, the black stone there. And when Wake jumps here, you can see he's waiting for Black to run a little bit more and give him power with his stone on the top side. So Muting's strategy here was to accept the fight and use the fight to punish the Black stone in the upper left to show that Black is too busy to save all of his weak groups right now. Black still has to save his main weak group, so he pushes out here. And White plays the Knight's move. If White would respond, then someday Black is going to Put pressure back on the white stone so white chose this timing to come back here allowing black to play another move in the center he chose the diagonal move and white attached i actually didn't understand this attached at first because i didn't realize that the black threat to seal in these four stones is actually serious you know sometimes it's hard to judge about how crucial some stones are, how heavy they are, whether you really want to save them or not. This is a situation where those four stones are definitely stones that you want to save as white, because it leaves black continuous weaknesses on the top side, meaning he'll have to keep paying and paying and paying to make that group strong if we just save ourselves a little bit in the center. So this attach, it means this area was really the most important to save my group right now, Black can Hane and connect like this. And even after this, you can see when White punishes again on the left side, Black is allowing White to get some territory and some influence in the center at the same time while he is only defending himself in relatively Dame. Dame meaning a valueless point, one of the end game points that has literally zero territory. When I say these are Dame, I'm expecting in the end game that there wouldn't be any territory around here where Black is running. So this group, which wait, if I were away, I might have sacrificed that one. It definitely made sense to save and take the influence that you even get by making it strong, since it also gains on the other side. Okay, Black should continue to run out his group. He plays the push from behind and White jumps. I know a lot of people have some confusion about when you're allowed to jump, when you're allowed to Hane, when you're allowed to extend. This is the situation where white jump seems to be correct, because uh, we are expecting for black's next move a knight's move. If black had originally played a knight's move from here, then there was a cut which was quite concerning for black. But once black has pushed one time, if we would just extend and then knight's move comes, then you can see this cut is now able to be answered with a net for black. So if we just extend and black plays the knight's move, then black is getting ahead in the race, right? There's something of a pushing battle to the center where whoever can get on top is going to be putting a surrounding pressure on the other group, right? 
If this diagram would happen, we just wish that we could move this extending stone to the blinking point, right? That's why muting plays the jump. It's a move that you want to play when you want to get ahead and you understand that you can't really put pressure anymore on your opponent's stones, so you're just trying to make them fly fast. Now, if Dang Yifei would play here, then it doesn't put very much pressure on white in turn. So white had some cutting points, that's the downside of playing the jump. This knight's move is not putting pressure on them. That's why instead Dang Yifei plays the wedge and forces white to Atari from the outside and connect here. This way, Dang Yifei can use the white weaknesses later. Dang Yifei continues directly with invasion here. If he really gets in trouble with this group, he has now a wedge here, Atari, 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 and capture. This can only work because White played the jump and left himself a couple of cutting points on the top side. Similarly, this kind of thing will happen in almost every game, where if you jump, you're going to leave some cutting points and they're going to be accessible from the opponent somehow. Right? So we only want to play the jump in situations where getting ahead is more important than having a stable shape, which is a situation like this. And we would prefer to play the Hane, but if we don't have a stable shape at all. If we can't hold after they cut, then we can't can't do that, of course. So if Hana here, then black cut, and the white group is in bigger trouble than the black group. Jump made sense, and wedge made sense, and then the Tanuki timing made sense. Now, this kind of 3-3 invasion, I always find it very difficult to answer, because <laughs> there's this stone at F17 already. That one is going to be useful for black somehow, right? It's going to help Black gain some kind of resource to help their 3-3 live easier. So the question is, how are we supposed to punish it, right? Like, how are we supposed to attack if they already have that stone? My instinct was actually to block on the bottom side, but Muting showed me I was wrong. He blocked here. And I didn't understand why at first, because I didn't see that Muting was going to play this move. If you just play a standard Joseki, something like this, and black can play the Hane and connect, then you still kind of have to respond here because black's cut is going to break your territory and give you cutting points, make you weak. If you respond here though, the black exchange has forced two extra white defensive moves rather than just the one that they really owe. So white is very over concentrated on the top side. This is too many stones for the shape that uh, wait, actually has. This stone would be activated, basically, if black could Hane connect on the top side. That's why Muting instead plays the Hane first. This is normally not a Joseki, okay? Do not play this unless you are sure of what you're doing. Black can Hane back and jump, and normally this territory is very good for black, as well as black has a good amount of influence towards the side leader, so he can control a lot of the fights in the corner and side better. What white has in return is that this black stone can now be called a bad exchange. So if we took that stone off and one of the white stones off, then white would be more weak. But because that stone is already there, white can be satisfied with the strength that he has on the top side. He can say, hey, the black stone is making a slightly bad exchange, helping my shape be stronger. So it's a good way to punish this kind of uh, invasion stone if this kind of thing happens to you in the future you can block and you can even Hane yourself so to make it so that their stone is a bad exchange although the direct local result in the corner is not good for weight well then how can we continue if if black already has the side in the corner pretty well weight can play towards the pushing battle direction remember when weight jumped and black just wedged and and left that means that White can now play the surrounding threatening move of the Knight's move and even look to make some territory in the bottom center. Black plays approach. He doesn't care at all to run his group because running that group would not make territory. And he believes correctly that if White would continue to attack him with one more move, he could definitely live either by capturing these three stones with the sequence I showed you before or even just with random eyes all over the place that you're bound to get with a group this big. So he ignores the weight attack for the moment and chooses to try to play speedily to the bottom left corner. 
but Muting wants to follow up somehow, so he tries approaching the upper left corner. He wants to show that that corner can be a little weak too, that he can use some of its weakness to help him gain value in the form of territory on the left side and in the form of aggressive potential against the black group on the top side and even the approach stone that was just played in the bottom left. Black plays a two-space base. So Black knows that he's going to be going on defense now that Wait has come in. He's going to have to defend his stone for a little bit, but after that, all the Black groups are going to have to save themselves. He preemptively makes himself a nice, safe two-space base and waits for the tides to roll in. White plays jump. So it's basic for now, nothing special, because there's no Tetsuji that we've highlighted yet. There's no many weaknesses that we can try to mess around with. Those weaknesses are created when Black plays the jump here. Looking to defend his group in the upper left and potentially link to the group on the top side, and most importantly, keep the white group a little bit weak, a little bit on its toes on the left side. Wait can now start to trigger his Tezuji. He plays the peep here once. If Wait would be able to push through the one space jump in the center, it would be just far too good for him. So Black must connect there. And Wait could push and cut somehow, but that wouldn't actually help him in terms of his control with his two stones. You know, those two stones are supposed to become strong now and allow him to attack the left side group, the upper left group, the top black group, all sorts of things are supposed to be getting pressured now. So White focuses on taking strength with his two stones first, so he plays the Kosumi. If Black would ignore this, then White could push through and take the corner territory in Sente. That's why Black answers, and then White plays another diagonal move. Yes, Miu Ting is very brutal. He just played peep, he played the diagonal, he played another diagonal, just making sure that this upper left black group had living problems clearly. And to try to provoke Dang Yifei to spend another move inside. Dang Yifei played the turn here. Miu Ting protects himself, making sure to stay thick in front of all the groups which he wants to attack later. And Dang Yifei is forced to protect himself in the corner after playing a couple of forcing moves. These exchanges gain a little bit of potential Aji to handle later before he is truly forced to save his group in the upper left. Alright, so how to continue for Wade? What can we handle next? Should we attack the left side? Should we attack the top side to steal its base? Muting plays the bamboo shape here. So he saw that Black had the wedge lined up to save his group in the top side, and he stopped it. With his bamboo shape, he also looks to outline a little bit of territory again in the center. Well, Dang Yifei should look to make a base for himself now. He plays the kick. It's very normal and natural. White plays the Hane. And Black takes the shape point of the mouth shape in the center. This looks like a sort of baiting way. If White could Atari here, that would be great. But in the game, Muting just connected. Muting would have, I'm sure, loved to Atari here. But then... Black could Atari like this. And if White captures, Black connects. Actually, Black is putting a lot of pressure back on the upper left White, on the top side White. Now, if White goes here, Black's descent is Sente to save that one stone, capturing the upper left White. If White saves that again, then Black can just save here, and the White Panuki is dead. That's why White did not play the Atari, and just pulled back here, staying safe on the top side. Black played the wedge, and it's not really a natural looking move, right? You'd more expect Black to play a block here and take his space, but in this case, White could push here and play the peep. So although Black has one eye in the center, this eye is false, and this eye is not possible to take. So Black was worried that his whole group could be quite weak here, that it wouldn't have any secure two eyes. That's why he wedged here. White plays here, and Black plays here. Black looks to make another eye in the center. You may ask then, why didn't White play from this side? So to help poke that eye in the center, in this case, Black would play the push here first. Then if White blocks, Black and Atari, and of course, this is going to be good for Black. If White captures, then Black could turn. 
And the three stones on the top side are actually getting in some significant trouble. It's the same sort of position again, where Black is busting through the top side white shape. So that's why Wei had to play here. And when Black plays here, he feels much safer. But I don't think he expected what Miu Ting was going to do next. It looks very normal for Miu Ting to just connect here. And then if Dang Yifei would block on the top side, his group would be quite strong. And we could continue with normal play where White goes to the bottom left and etc. Yeah, Miu Ting doesn't like etc. He likes fighting. And he played the Atari here. It looks quite over the line, I have to say. This looks crazy. Because when Black cuts, it's Sente to capture those three stones on the top side, which would be huge. So White needs to answer. And then Black already has a route back by capturing that one stone if he wants it. And even the whole White group here, it got cut in Sente, it's all attackable. So Dang Yifei plays a bigger attacking move like this and threatens to surround the whole thing and go on a counterattack. Well, this counterattack is not quite as good as it seems, as it feels it should be. Because the Miu Ting Atari here, it gained the potential to capture those four black stones later in uh, basically in the transition to endgame. It's a huge territory move, it doesn't mean anything for weaknesses, so we can just hold that in reserve. Miu Ting is saying, hey, although I have to now get counterattacked to go on defense on the left side, as long as I can save that, I managed to gain a lot of territory. And you still, Black, you still have to worry about making sure that this group is connected. You'll still have to spend a move at some point to make it strong. Okay, so maybe this is going to be fine for Miu Ting, but he still has to prove that he can save his group on the left side. And it really looks not that easy. You know, if I had this position as white against a world champion like Dang Yifei, uh, <laughs> I would be sweating buckets. It's, it's tough. But me, Yu Ting, is comfortable with this kind of thing. He's happy to be very aggressive and commit to a hard defense. He plays the attach here. And Dang Yifei plays here. You may wonder why he didn't try to properly surround this, this stone. Well, Miu Ting was going to play the push here and this one. Now be careful, you cannot Atari here because Miu Ting will Atari this one. And if you capture, Suddenly, the whole top side black is dead. This is the kind of thing which muting is waiting for. It's why, when this one happens, Dang Yifei would probably have to play here, and then muting could make a comfortable looking base on the left side. That's why Dang Yifei stole the base first, like this, and asked muting to fight by trying to run out. Well, muting tries like this. Dang Yifei cannot cut because of the same kind of problem where Miu Ting will take power against the top group. And so instead, Dang Yifei tries to play from the outside. Hane is like this, trying to squeeze Miu Ting in. Now most players here are going to just connect back their two stones, make the cuts for black, try to save the group. Miu Ting is not most players. He plays Clamp. Wow. <laughs> Clamp now. Even when you have those stones, you can clamp, you can play from the other side. Dang Yifei can just split your shape, right? Well, now Miu Ting connects. Dang Yifei has many cutting problems on the outside. He should fix them somehow. Miu Ting makes a pushing exchange first, and then he pushes here. Miu Ting has read that Dang Yifei has some serious cutting problems. Yeah, actually all that he can do, all that Black can do is connect back this way, allow White to Atari, and go like this. If Dang Yifei would try to do anything more serious, let's say this one, for example, well, in this case, Wei could just connect with Tiger's Mouth, the whole topside black group instead. You can't do that one. Then how about this one? Well, when Wei does this one, again, we have to connect back, right? There's still going to be cutting problems on the outside in the same way that it happened in the game, where Wei cuts here. Black extends like this. And that allows White to capture these four stones. So you may wonder, well, why, why didn't Black just not die with those four stones? Why didn't Black Atari here, you know? Now you could save these stones, and you could even make an Atari here, try to capture the White. It looks much better, right? Instead of answering this Atari, White had planned to Atari here and descend. This captures the Black inside. You can see the White stones have four liberties, and these Black two stones, they have only three. If there's a capturing race to Suji, and maybe it could be reversed somehow, but there's no Tsuji that I see in that position. 
Therefore, this weight group would be able to become alive by capturing the left side. That's a lot of territory even. As it becomes alive, this result is very good for weight. That's why Black had to just pull back here and let Muting capture those four stones. The initial clamp, which looked crazy, it actually forced Dang Yifei to play another move, splitting the weight shape, which looked like it was going to just be very powerful. That extra move is too committal. Muting has showed now, he, hey, I can capture your four stones. You weren't supposed to respond to my clamp. That was too heavy. Now I just captured you. I ruined your fighting. Muting, throughout each stage of the game so far, has gained a little bit. He's solidly in the lead. Black plays the Hane. He's looking for Aji. Now if Muting answers here, then Black has another Atari or two, and he can look to attack the white bottom left corner. 99 out of 100 pros will say, an Atari or two, that's fine. I'll just capture the stones, become very strong. It's a game which I'm winning a lot, and I can just make it simple. <laughs> Muting is not 99 out of 100 pros. He plays Empty Triangle, not capturing the black stones, making an empty triangle all on purpose. <laughs> Why? Because Muting is the kind of player who says, hey, you want to fight against me when I have that kind of thickness over there? I dare you. Do it. Please do it. And it doesn't matter when. It doesn't matter what the conditions are. It's a Tianyuan title match. He doesn't care. You want to fight me where I'm strong? Do it. I dare you. <laughs> what a player. What a player. Dang Yifei knows it's kind of scary, you know? Wei has actually a lot of stones there. If he runs out these black stones, there's no guarantee that that fighting will turn out to be okay. So what he tries to do is prepare. Dang Yifei, very smartly here, plays attach. Now if White plays another move in the center, then this empty triangle looks crazy, because he could have just captured the stones in, in one move, right? And Black would be able to pretty much capture the White stone in the corner. So White, you know, to feel like he's still doing something reasonable, he has to try to save his corner stones. So he plays a push here one time, Black blocks again, taking the power towards the center. Again, Black is planning to run these stones out. There's no net, it's just fighting, if that happens. White saves again to his corner. Black Hanes, hey, are you really going to save your corner? White's like, yeah, I'm saving this corner. Black's like, all right. <laughs> Gauntlet's been thrown down, let's go. Yeah, White was leading by like 10 points, by the way. There was no need to do any of this, but it's Miu Ting. So there's a need to do this. <laughs> we have to see it. Let's see what kind of fighting Mewtwo can do now. Of course, if your power is all over here, then you have to guide the black group towards your other strength. So Mewtwo plays push here and push here. Black plays an Atari to make the white have an empty triangle and plays the Tiger's Mouth. After this Tiger's Mouth, white can connect here and white is even connected to his left side stones because Black has a shortage of liberty. Black can't play the cut because it's self-atari. So you may wonder then, why did Black play Tiger? Why couldn't Black have played the solid connect? Well then, in this case, White would still connect here, and Black would be able to cut in Sente, pretty much capturing that White group. Actually, that White group has five liberties. And Black group has three, and Black has the next move. So shouldn't Black be able to expand his liberties, get like five at least, and then go capture this, this White? The answer is no. <laughs> I'm sure that they were spending a lot of time to read this out in the game. No matter how Black tries to run these stones, Black cannot get five liberties. Two more, that's all he needs. But expanding your liberties is actually really hard. Even if Black plays jump, this is looking to make a solid connection in the center. If White gives that solid connection, then you can see Black already has five liberties and can definitely look for more. White wouldn't give it to them. White has to play here. Break the black space, break the black shape. Make sure that when black connects through there, black has to do it in bad shape like this. And push black towards the other white stones and black has three liberties still, it's so hard to expand. The way to expand liberties is to run towards empty space and to make solidly connected shapes as you do it. Maybe you can think to play this one instead if you're black. Asking to play again to extend to the empty space there or to go to the empty space here, wait, will net you. 
Then when you push here, wait can't so that you get more empty space. Black already has five liberties, you see. You can go capture the white group over there. White needs to play Hane. Then you can play here. White needs to play Hane. You can play this one. You can play this one. You can play here. It looks like you're expanding your liberties. Black has four liberties. As long as there's some extra Tetsuji, then we can make this work. But white plays here. <laughs> there's nothing. <laughs> Even black can try this one. <laughs> Take use of the white liberty. Somehow I need to make something happen, right? I should do something like this. And white plays here. If you connect, if white does this one, then black can cut like this. Can save. Maybe it's still going to be good for white, but it could work. Instead of playing there, white realizes, hey, black has four liberties. I'll be lax for a moment. Because black can't expand their liberties if they have no empty space to run to. That's the most important thing I want you to learn from this connect not working. It became a liberty race. White was going to win by one. He had five liberties. Black could get to four. Black could not get to five because there's not enough empty space to run to. And however black would try to make a thick shape, white would always be able to intercept it. Seal it in. Make sure that black couldn't make a long capture race efficient stick to win the game. Okay, very well read by both players. They both knew that that capture race was winning by one liberty for white. So black played Tiger's Mouth. White connects here. White is fully connected. Black is not lost just because of that. In fact, black maybe has his best chance of the game so far. Black can play jump. Black is going to chase the white five stones here. And even, don't forget the white corner. It's also weak, right? If there's so many weaknesses here, Surely black should be able to get something, right? If black can get something, anything, it can be good for black. White was supposed to get so much here. White plays Hane and jump. It's the shape point of those two stones, but when I was spectating this game, before I checked anything with AI or anything like that, I thought, shouldn't white play here? Because this way, I'm looking to gain power more directly against the weak black shape in the center. If black it responds to me over here, then I can get enough power to go capture these two stones, then I'm, I'm safe, right? I mean, sure, black can save his group, can cut me on the bottom side, but white is easily winning in this variation. If I play here, the problem is actually that black will save this area. And then I was like, oh, I should be able to cut, I should be able to capture this black. Hey, you're dead in the bottom left. If you don't pay enough attention, it can just it can just die. You know, black reduces the space from the left side, reduces the space from the bottom side. It's an L shape in the corner. If you don't know the L shape in the corner, it's this particular corner shape, the four stones that outline some territory. That shape is cleanly dead. Even though white has the next move, white cannot live this shape no matter what. Yeah, so if I was white in this position, I would, I would lose in quick fashion. Good thing for me, instead, is Miu Ting, who's white in this position. He plays the shape point, as we should, and black has to connect like this. It's an empty triangle, it's quite painful, but black still has a lot of pressure against these white cutting stones, and even against the stones in the corner. White tries to run. The skedaddle to get out of there to save himself. As long as white is safe with all of his attacking groups, then all of the black weaknesses will turn to become very useful in due time. Black plays here. White can't save that stone. White pushes here. If white saves that stone, black has this move. It's a double threat. I cut you here, or I cut you here. White tries to prepare it. Black plays here, preparing again the counter response. White prepares again the cut. Black ignores like this. Eventually, if White will just connect here. White will become too weak. It's too hard to win a capture race against the black group in the corner, especially when you still have to save your group on the other side. So White now is just struggling to save himself everywhere. He's trying to take his best possible shape, his best possible strength in every position. He plays the Hane here and Tiger's Mouth on the bottom side. He's just trying to expand his liberties to Strengthen himself in front of the two weak black groups. Black saves this side, so White cuts here. White hopes that this Hane Tiger's Mouth that he's gotten on the bottom side is enough now to capture the inside black. You may ask what had happened if 
Black would eat from this side. Then White could play here. Then it looks like Black can do the same thing, try to capture the corner again. But because White has this strength now, White can play these moves in Sente. Even the Tiger looks like Black can fix in Sente, but White threatens to connect them underneath one more time. If White forces Black to play there, then White will get the time to make a living shape in the corner. You can see it's much bigger than the L shape that we looked at a little while ago. That means it has enough space for two eyes. That's why Black played here, knowing that he could not properly attack the corner yet. And White played here, hoping that there would be nothing in the corner. Black plays Knight's move one time, push one time, Hane. Locally, that shape in the bottom left corner is dead. The white shape on the bottom side, also dead. <laughs> we have to capture the black stick inside, or we lose. If it's a Ko, we probably lose too, because black saved everything in the center, you know? Broke the whole center. Don't forget the bottom right white group is weak too. Even the center territory that I was talking about white building earlier, that's so thin now, black could start to launch an attack there and capture something there too. So if this doesn't turn out well for white, it might be over. Mew Ting though, he has very, very good reading. He read this perfectly. He plays peep. I cast the answer, he plays block. Black should play the Hane to attack this corner. A lot of people like to try to throw in a stone first when they see the L shape. It's easy to read that this shape is dead. It's a bulky five. The problem is it's a bulky five. Bulky five shapes are known for their cornucopias of liberties. It's just insane amount of liberties under this weight shape because black has to fill in the eye several times over to capture weight. So this capture race would not even be close anymore, honestly. This black group has only, what, five liberties right now? Four if it plays outside here. This white group has <laughs> eight or nine. So black must reduce the amount of eye space that weight has so to make the capturing shape inside smaller. That allows weight to have many less liberties than otherwise. Weight exchanges the Hane now. It's in good timing. Black fills the liberty and weight Hane is back here. Now black has to kill, so he has to take the shape point. Weight plays a 2-1. Black has to play the other 2-1 and weight captures. Black can capture now, but the reason why white chose this shape, why white played a4 now, was so that White would have the opportunity to play here with his Sente. What this is doing is trying to expand White's liberties by running to the side and also using the Black weakness on the left side. Black has to respond here. If Black wouldn't respond and instead chase from this side, then White could just come in and peep here. Even the whole <laughs> left group might be what White races against. White maybe will allow Black to Atari from this side Maybe we'll try to capture the left side. I mean, we don't even have to. We can Atari these three stones and live and win the capture race easily, but it's very dangerous for Black if he would ignore this. That's why he attached here. And Muting could capture now. He could play on top, but it invites some strange co stuff and it gives Black a nice shape when Black plays on top and just pulls back to make eyes as well. So instead, Muting played here. It looks very strange in comparison. You could capture that one stone, but instead you want to peep and allow black to connect. Well, Mi Ting had a very good point here, and he had precisely read this out, I think, from a, a long time ago, where Mi Ting can now play the connect here, preventing there from being a ko to capture the key black stones that were cutting the two weak white groups. So if this capture race will work for white, this is fantastic. The trick is it's not entirely clear that the capture race will work for white. Black has four liberties over here, and black can play the Atari right now. If white connects, then white is dead. So white shouldn't connect. White plays the cut now. This is the reason why the peep was a good move. It gains a liberty in the capturing race by means of threatening a snapback on black later. When black Black Tanukis now. We start fighting it somewhere else. When White plays here, Black can later capture like this. And can play this Atari. It's threatening a Ko. White doesn't want a Ko to capture these stones. White wants to connect. Then if Black plays here, it's Atari. And, and in terms of the Liberty Raise between the corner White and 
the black stones on the bottom, black is winning by one move. But there's a critical problem, which I hope you see. Wait, Atari is here. It's snapback. So even though black would win the capture race locally, white's peep and cut was designed to force black to spend another move in his own territory before he could continue with the capture race, therefore gaining white one liberty in the capture race, just enough to secure the kill on the bottom black stones. Wow, beautiful. That must be it, right? That must be the end of the game. Great job, muting. All's over now. <laughs> it wouldn't be a muting game if it went like that. Black attacks the bottom right, shatters the center. How do we save it? <laughs> if it was me, I would just play here. I would hope for some normal situation like this, and and I don't know. Black can try to capture that, and I'll just I'll just chill in the center somehow, and I'll just you know I'll try not to die. And, Nothing special will happen. But Miu Ting, when he sees this move, what's his first instinct? Oh, I cut. <laughs> of course, why not? Why not cut? Why not cut, after all? Black exchanges the capture in his left side territory. You can see they're in Byoyomi at this time, or in Time Trouble, where they're playing some forcing moves just to expand their time. Of course, the capture inside meant that White needed to fill Liberty. Black plays the cutting move here. Muting's confused, what does he do? Cut with an empty triangle, of course. <laughs> Why not? And Black plays the push here. Actually, Muting has good reason to be cutting randomly with empty triangles, even though he's winning and should <laughs> clean up the game. Uh, Muting is claiming, I can either capture your two stones or your one stone, right? Like, it's pretty hard for you to imagine Black being able to fix this one stone, which could be laddered or netted in several ways, and these two stones, which there's a beautiful shape point to cut them for, right? Well, yeah, if Black plays here, then of course White will chase the other cutting point. Then Black could save like this. Ensuring these two stones in the center, but White would be able to save his bottom right stones with some territory, even. So this would be a successful variation for white. That's why black played here. So we thought if white takes the vital point again and I have to push through a few times, now it's going to be Atari. So I won't have to net those stones, I'll be able to directly capture them. That actually gains a lot in terms of power on the right side. That's why Mew Ting did not strike right away, save his stones like he could if he wanted to be safe, but extend. <laughs> this one gives black a chance to save those two stones. And Muting has to capture the two stones in the center, but it isn't even clear how to do that. Muting plays this move. <laughs> what? Here? Why not? Simple. Why not like Hane? Well, Black has this move in Sente, remember? Always Wei has to connect to save his group on the left side. Then Black can play turn. If White plays here, then of course we can get some Ko where we're trying to save our, uh, our bottom right group in a Ko, but that's not what Muting wants. He wants better than that. But it's hard to get better than that. If <clears throat> white plays here and wedge, white cannot wedge here because black plays this one and makes a snapback. So what if white plays this one? Again, this move is sente. Again, black can play here. And again, we make the same kind of ko which Muting really doesn't want to play. So the important point Muting decided was that move, that black stone, that's why he played it. And black now has to save his two stones, try to bring them out on top over this stone, this cutting stone. Black pushes once after an exchange towards the right side to try to gain strength to do that. Muting plays here. Wait, what? A connection to the bottom right, but black can just honey. So, Muting's original plan here, he cuts with the idea, oh, I'm going to capture those two stones or the one stone, and then suddenly, both of them are safe, and they're capturing black. I mean, they're capturing white. I mean, even black has a huge amount of extra territory on the side here, and all Muting is doing is, like, connecting very patiently and passively. Like, this must have been some sort of misreading, right? Like, this can't be the fighting that he was going for. Well, if you play here, it looks like it works at first because if black plays this one we can play this move and now if black plays here a naive viewer may think oh black is connected like bamboo bamboo one space jump everything is connected right not so fast wait has wedge 
Atari, Atari, Atari. It's a connect and die. The whole black would be dead. So this one, it looks like it would work. I'm sure Mewtwo thought it would be safe, but suddenly he may have seen a oh, cut income. Then we can capture that stone, of course, and Black can just get this Atari. That's all he has in Sente. And then jump here. Oh, wait. Now if I play here and Black plays this one, I can't throw in the same way to make a Liberty Shortage. There's no more. That, that stone is off the board. There's no more Liberty Shortage. So if I Hane here, it looked like it wasn't going to work for White. But actually, there was a beautiful sequence here. Very, very pretty. That Muting missed in the game. It was in time trouble, of course. Muting could play Wedge here. Then, if Black Atari is here, Muting will play Atari here. Black can't connect because this stone is at Atari on that group. Black should capture. Then, White could play here. It looks like it's going to be a Ko again. And Ko was not acceptable, as, as we've discussed. However, it's not a Ko again. When Black Atari is here, what extends? Black can't cut because it's self-Atari. Black can capture here, but then White can connect. White makes a Liberty Shortage for Black in the center. It looks like it's no big deal, like Black can fix all the Liberty Shortages, but there's another Liberty Shortage for Black on the bottom side. That suddenly triggers, and when White plays here, it's a connect and die with like 27 stones. So all this to say Muting could have played Hane there, but he didn't see it. He got nervous. He came back and connected here. And Black took the chance to make a huge territory in the right center, swinging back the game. But Muting played this useless looking connecting move for a reason. He saw a great follow up actually on low playouts. My AI th here, it thinks Black is winning. And I show up Muting's idea, and it's like, oh, never mind. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're right, Muting is still winning. Feel free to pause the video and see if you can find it. It's a really beautiful idea where weight saves, even though the bottom right stones have like hardly even connected, even though this area looks like it's going to be huge, even though weight hasn't captured those four stones, the last big endgame, weight's going to do everything, everything all at once. Weight plays Wedge. It looks... Very strange. Like, this one space jump was was connected. I can just Atari you. Wait. Cuts again. Okay, I can capture. Wait. Ataris. What was the meaning? <laughs> Why did he do this? Can't Black just connect? If Black connects, Wait is saying, what I gained in Sente was that you can't cut me from the bottom right anymore. This is safe, stable shape. You know, if Black tries to cut somehow, Wait has an Atari. And because there's another Liberty Shortage on the bottom side, that cut will stay even though Black wins the Co. Black played here. But this Co is for like literally 30 points, 15 stones. Why didn't Black win the Co? Even though it's not Sente, fine, you know, whatever. If Black had won the Co, then Wait would play this move. Oh, it's beautiful. The meaning is Wait saves his stones while still threatening to save these and capture the whole black center. So black would have to save his stones, capture the three stones, and go to and allow white to go to the final big endgame. So white would be able to go one by one through all the problems in his position and fix them all. That's why Dang Yifei, realizing that that variation would be a losing endgame for black, extended here capturing the right side in big fashion and allowing this Ko. <laughs> this Ko is massive. If if White wins, White captures these five stones, takes you know the 10 points of territory there, and another 20 points of territory over there. If Black wins, it's not even Sente. <laughs> it's a picnic Ko for White. It's so painful. But this is the only way that Black had to continue to fight to try to win the game. Black has a lot of Ko threats too. All of the moves in the bottom left, you know, if Wei is winning the capture race by only one move, they're all Sente. So Wei finds some Sente. This move is threatening to kill the black left group on the side. Black answers. Wei has to answer all of the black co-threats in the bottom left. Wei finds a co-threat or two of his own. When black plays here, 
White has no more free co-threats, co-threats that don't lose any points. So White has to make a decision. How badly do you want to win this co? Are we just going to play some big move? Are we going to play some losing move that creates a lot of co-threats and hope to win the co even though we make some local loss? Well, it's muting. Of course we take the local loss. Of course. What am I talking about? White saves his dead stones. He throws another stone into Black's territory. Black can just connect outside. It's all dead inside. So this black territory is literally just one point bigger, and black has a little bit more strength on the outside. What does white get? More co-threats. So when white recaptures the co and black plays his extra co-threat in the bottom left, white has this one. Black has the answer. And white recaptures the co, black has another co-threat. That was his last one. And what does white have? One more co-threat to save his stones inside. Yeah, the black territory is bigger after that losing move, but there's so many more co-threats, and this co is so massive. At this point, Dang Yifei can't bear to continue the co any longer. He trades. He saves his stones, winning 30 points over here, but letting White capture back on the right side. Capturing these three stones, saving his group. That can play here, that can play this one, that can play Atari. Because of the shortage of liberties, this cut is not possible for White to play. White would die. So Black has managed to answer the, the co threat follow up in, in Sente and take the last big move the top side but it's not enough white is leading the game there is only one trick left white plays here black plays here white plays here black plays here white plays here if it were me playing i would have lost <laughs> because i wouldn't have seen that Black was attacking the whole white dragon, the entire center, from the left side of the board to the right. It didn't have two eyes. If white would have tenukied and played some move like this, or some naive move, not making a second eye with this group, it only has those three stones. This is its only eye. Black could play here and here, no eye on the top side. Black could play here, no eye in the center. Black could play here and here, no eye over there, no eye over here. It's all dead. But Miu Ting, not like me, not naive enough to think his 57 stone group is immortal. <laughs> he plays the living move. Dang Yifei exchanges an Atari and resigns. Boy is leading by about 10 points at the end of the day. <laughs> A much more exciting 10 point game than it had to be if Wei would not have invited the crazy fighting in the left side. But that's Miu Ting for you. That's a good game for you. And I'm happy to see you again next week for game two after Muting has gone up 1-0 in the Tianyuan title match. Looking to reclaim his throne as the Tianyuan title holder. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.